Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is Training for Corel Draw. These are just a few examples from some of my video tutorials. Let's just get this stuff out of the way here. Now, when you're working along with my project, you can download the actual project file. You'll find a link right there inside of the description. Let's go ahead and take a look at the description, and you'll find a link in there to download this file. And of course, make sure that you like the video, share the video with your friends, and also subscribe. Okay, let's go ahead now and get on to the video tutorial. In this Corel Draw X8 video, we'll be making this compass rose here. If I just back out a little bit, you can see this thing. There we go. So we'll be doing this compass rose. Pretty straightforward, but it does touch upon a few interesting techniques. We're doing a bevel technique in here and a few of these shapes, doing some shape stuff, and of course a little bit of drop shadows as well. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with a brand new file. I'll just click the plus right there, which gives us a new file. The size I have this set at is 11 by 8.5, and, and it's in landscape mode, and 300 dots per inch. Choose OK. There we go. I'm just going to zoom in just a touch. There we are. And let's start off with creating a star. This is the basic part of our whole thing. There's our star. I'm just going to give this an orange color to begin with, but we'll change the color once we have this thing on the page. Now in the star, your basic settings are four points, because we're doing a four point star, so it's four points. And then for our settings up here, we want to have 71 for the sharpness. Now if I pull that out, that gives us this kind of a star, like that. Now the sharpness setting here, this controls that angle right there between the points. That's what that sharpness setting does. So let's put that back up to 71 again. There we are. Okay, so there's the basic star. You can our pick move that around a little bit. Now that we have this in position, we can resize this to the size that I want for this. And I have mine sized at 1.95 inches. So let's go up here and I'll just make both of these say 1.95 like that. And that enter key and this undo that little lock ratio there so I can make sure these stay the same. There we go. Okay, it's exactly the same width as the height, and there's our 1.95, and the zoom into touch. Okay, there's the basic star shape. This is kind of the basic of the whole thing, the first thing that we're going to be doing. Now, on this, we need to change our coloration on this, and then we'd be putting in that bevel onto this as well. So, right down here at the bottom of the window, just double click on that little icon here, and it brings up the edit fill options. So now over here on the hex side, we can actually change this number. The one I used was FFC641 and choose OK. So it's a little kind of a medium orange color. That's all that is. OK, now I want to put in that kind of a bevel effect on this. You'll find the bevel listed up here under effects and bevel right there. Now what this does is it brings up the bevel docker. You see a little check mark means that that's already up. So I have mine right over here. I'll just click on that. And there's the bevel docker right hand side. Now in here we can set up our distance and our light controls. So for the distance on this one, I'm going to be changing this one to 0.31. On the intensity, I have mine set at 97. On the direction, 24. And altitude, 53 and choose apply. And there we go. That gives us that nice little setting in here. So the altitude, if I change that around a bit, you can see how this increases or decreases the brightness of that. So I'm going to have my set at 53. There we go. The direction changes the direction of the light. So you can choose which direction you want just by kind of rotating around on your direction. And I have mine set for 24. 
there we go. And the intensity here controls, you, you can see there, kind of the amount, you know, the, the quality of that. So you can have kind of a soft lighting or a real intense lighting. And mine's pretty close to the top here at 97. And finally, the distance up here, if I pull this down a bit, and just continue on down real, real low. There we go. So you see that that gives you the distance here of the bevel, how far the bevel goes. So just to fit on this shape, 31 works out very nicely. That's what that does. Okay, so that's the bevel. I'm also using the soft edge. There's two options here, soft edge and emboss. We're using the soft edge on this. Okay, now that we have this done, I want to place this onto the center of the page. So let's click on the object and then object, align and distribute, center page. There we are. So everything else can be based upon that position of the center of the page. Okay, now I want to have another one in here. So let's go over here to our star again. I'll draw another star just like that. It's going to come in, you know, very, very similar. Let's change the coloration of this. Now the color that we chose over here is now down here in our little color set. So let's go ahead and choose right there. That just matches that color for us. Okay. Let's now set the size on this second star and all of our settings. So on this one, I want to have the Settings at four point and the sharpness at 87, which is going to be giving us a thinner edge here. There we go, 87. And let's change our size to 1.75. I'll just type that in up here. And there we go, 1.75. And I want to rotate this around by 45 degrees. There we go. And then we'll apply a bevel to this as well. Our bevel docker is still up. So let's go ahead and take a look at our settings. Now on this one, I'll be changing the bevel distance to 26. There we go. Everything else is staying the same on that. Let's now center this one. Object and align and distribute. Center a page, puts it right on top. And now right click and we're going to move this order back a page it just puts it in behind like that there we go okay so that's our two lines in here let's double check this and i found that i have to do this twice for reasons i don't really know why but go up here and make sure that your settings are the same this one we can now just go ahead and lock the ratio and let's set this back to the 1.75 there we are Okay, so that's what we're looking for. We have these two in here. Now, if you want to, you can get rid of the edge of the outline on this. And that's right up here. I'll set that to none. Click on our back one in here, set that one to none as well. Okay. Now, we want to bring our first circle onto this. So go over here to the circle, ellipse tool. And we'll be drawing from the center and if you hold down the control and the shift key it draws right from the middle now i'm going to start off first with making this thing just a black circle hold the control shift key and play see how it's just you know drawing from the center like that it makes it really easy to do that okay let's just get rid of that one now the coloration i want on this i want to have no fill so click on the no option right there and I want to have it white for the outline, so right click on white. That gives us no fill and then white, and then set the size up here to four points. And come right over the center. Doesn't need to be exact, we'll adjust this in just a second. Hold the Control Shift key down and pull this out until it's about out here somewhere. It'll look like that. Now there's a whole white circle, we're only seeing it where it's overlapping. Now the size that you want on this is 1.5, so just go ahead and adjust the size up there so that the size is 1.5. Now 
Now to put a bevel on this, I need to convert this outline over into a shape. So go up here to Object and come down Convert Outline to Object. And there we go. Now I have that done, I can apply a bevel onto this. And we'll see the whole circle as soon as we do the bevel. So for the bevel, bevel distance 26, that's fine. 97 for our intensity. Now on the direction, I've changed the direction here. Do this one at 95. Everything else the same and choose apply. And there we go. There is that circle. So far so good. Now let's make sure this is centered. So object, align and distribute, center of page. There we go. That's now nicely lined up with everything else. Okay, last little bit on this. We'll do our drop shadow here, and then we'll do a drop shadow on that back star as well. So let's go over to the object properties, actually object manager. There we are. There's the curve. Make sure you click on just the curve so that your, the bevel is not selected. So it's just on curve. And go over here, click on drop shadow tool, and come in the middle and just pull out just a little bit like that. That just gets things started. Now that we have this done, we can adjust our settings. So set the feathering up here to 2. Leave the transparency at 50. And then on the offset, click the top one up 3 notches. It's 0 0.03. And then the bottom one here, down 2. So it's over and down. And there we go. There's that drop shadow. Okay, back to our pick tool. Let's go to the star in behind. That's this one. Open that up. Make sure the bevel is not selected. If you see the bevel like that, just click on the star. So just the star is selected and not the bevel. And we'll do the same thing on this for that drop shadow. So drop shadow right in the middle. Pull out a little bit. That just gets it started for us. We can now adjust our settings. So two and then up three and down two and that matches that drop shadow. So there we go, there's the drop shadows. Okay, next thing we have is one more little circle in the middle in here. Let's go ahead and do that little circle. Back over here to the circle. Same trick as we did on this one. We want to left click on no color, so there's no fill. Right click on white. And they're going to be setting this to two points. There we go. Come into the middle, hold down the control and, and shift keys and pull out. And I want to have this one set at 0 0.08. So pull it out a little bit like that. And then just adjust this to 0.8. And that makes that exact right size. And again, same thing as before. We'll go up here to object, convert outline to object. And then we're going to apply our bevel. So over here to the dockers, there's the bevel. The settings are the same as for the other, other circles, so just click Apply. There it is. There's no drop shadow on this one, so leave that one alone. I want to move this back, though. And to move things forward and back, you can use the Control key and the Page Up and Page Down keys on the keyboard. So I'll use the Control key and Page Down key, and just tap that a couple of times, and that moves it in behind. Okay, that part of this is finished. We now just need our big circle on the outside of this and then the lettering, and we're all ready to go. Okay, so go over here to the circle. I'm just going to grab just a blue for this. There we go, nice little cyan. And come over to the center, control shift key, pull this out a bit like that. Let's get our size set. This is at 3.5. Enter key and that matches because those are lock ratio right there. So 3.5. I now want to put our gradient on this. So go to the object properties and go to fill up here and then click on fountain fill. There we are. Let's change the rotation. Let's come down here, this little area here, the rotation. Set this at negative 90. That puts the light at the bottom and the dark at the top. Let's now adjust our coloration in here. I'm going to go over here to the dark blue, hit that. And let's just pull this down a little ways, making the top a little bit darker, about a third of the way down. 
on that one. And go where it says white, click on the white one. There's our white color. Pull the slider up into the blue range and then come with just a little bit of blue. Stay along the top here so it's a bright blue. So you have a light blue to dark blue, that's what we're looking for, or like kind of a medium blue, so light blue to medium blue. Okay, last thing I wanna do is I wanna put this at the back of the page. So it's right click, there we go, right click and order, send it back of page. It's just in behind, there we go. Okay, let's zoom in on this and let's now put in our lettering. And for our lettering, go to the type tool, click on white, so we have white text. Change the size here to 24. And then change the type to Times New Roman. If it's not up in here, if you haven't used it recently, it's way at the bottom of the list, way down there someplace. There you go, Times New Roman. Just click up here. The top one is a capital N, and it's in white, so you can see that nice and easily. Just to make a duplicate of this. Now, a duplicate is holding the Control key down, hitting the D key, and let's go over to the Object Manager. So here's our two letters now. The top one is the white. Click on the bottom one, and let's change this to black right there. And then hit the right arrow one and down arrow one. And now while we're on this one, let's change our transparency. So click on transparency button right over here, left hand side, transparency tool. Click on the uniform transparency and it should default to a setting of 50 and that's fine. Okay, go back to the pick tool and put this up just a little bit. I'm just going to drag a selection like that around from the outside so it's easy to do. Around those, right click and group objects. That gives me a group. That makes it easier to work over here in the object manager. And just to the right hand side, this is our east side. So same thing. Grab the text tool. Everything should be the same up here now. Click capital E. There we go. Control D, which duplicates it. Click on the bottom of those two text lines. Make that black. One tap over, one tap down. Transparency tool. Uniform at 50, back to the pick tool, and there we go. Grab those together, right click, and group objects, and then I'll use the arrow keys and I'll just kind of tap this over into position. You know, about right in there somewhere. Okay, left side is west, so grab the type tool, same thing, just one click, shift W, and then control D makes a duplicate, Click on the bottom of those two text lines. See why I'm grouping these? That's because it's easy to see the two text lines. I would have a lot of text lines in here, but if I group those when I'm done with them, then I have just these two easy to spot text lines. That's why I'm doing that. Okay, black for that. Tap over, tap down on the arrow keys. Back to the transparency and uniform fill. It should say 50. Back to the pick tool. Looks good. Selection around those two, right click group objects, and then just use the arrow keys and let's tap that over into position. There we go. Maybe a little further over. Just kind of visually getting that positioned. And then finally, our bottom one, which will finish off the whole project. And that's the type tool, capital S. And control D duplicates it. Click on the bottom of those two text lines. Black, one tap over, one tap down on the arrow keys. Back to transparency. Uniform fill should say 50. And pick tool, there we go. And let's just do a marquee around those. Right click, group objects, and then arrow keys to move that into position. And there we go. There's a nice compass rose you can see here. Those little lines, that's just kind of a screen thing. Don't worry about that. That goes away. There we go. And there it is. So that's how to make a compass rose. It's kind of a fancy little map symbol here inside of Corel Draw. 
in this case the version x8 and let's just go ahead and fit that on our page there we go okay so that that's it that's the creating a compass rose okay before I leave you on this I just want to remind you here just bring this up there we go just want to remind you to make sure that you subscribe to my channel and click on the like button on all the videos that you like and of course share this video with everybody you can possibly think of the more you like the more you share the better my videos are positioned on YouTube and that allows me to do more of these videos so very very important to do all that kind of stuff make sure you share make sure you like and make sure you subscribe okay thanks again for watching on how to make a compass rose here inside of Corel draw thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video don't forget to subscribe so that you'll get first notice of new project videos in the future just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here you can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here and then thank you again for watching this 